What's up? I'll have you <laughs> introduce yourself and then we'll get started. All right, cool. So whenever you're ready, tell the people who you are. All right, what's up, y'all? My name is Kevin Lim. Um, I'm just a dancer guy. I'm just a regular dude. Just um, a dancer, okay. I feel like I'm just a dancer guy. Um, I dream about things, I have visions about things, and I want to execute them. And I feel like everybody has things that they like always want to do. And this is like one of those scary things for me that I feel like I'm trying to put out there in the world. But mm -hmm. I think it's cool just because I already have like cool, like really good people around me. And I think that's one of the best things about like trying to go into It makes it a little endeavor. easier. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Rather than just trying to like pull ideas out of your head and like <laughs> make them come come to fruition. Was yeah. there an exact moment where you were like, okay, I really want to start this project? Um, I think in terms of like actually like getting things started, um, it pretty much started for me like when I saw just like a random movie poster somewhere. Like I'm not the hugest Marvel fan in the world. Like I don't know like every single, <laughs> every single character's backstory, but like I saw a Marvel movie poster and it was for a uh, Black Panther. And I thought it was like super dope and I had kind of questions as to just like why they used like certain colors or like certain patterns and stuff like in in the in the picture itself and like kind of what inspired them and stuff like that and I found it super really incredibly almost like unbelievably difficult of like how how hard it is to find out who like even just like drew the poster and like who I don't know just like kind of get their insight, you know what I mean? And I feel like that is so important to just hear as like an artist and as a creative, mm -hmm. just because like these ideas are not stuff that just come out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It's just a product of like their life and what they've learned in their craft, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, ever since that poster, that kind of just started getting me thinking about how to, I guess, just connect like the art to the artist more. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah, uh, <laughs> do you have a name for this yet? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Please tell me and the people. <laughs> okay, so this has been honestly the hardest part about <laughs> about this whole thing. Yes. Yeah, like even when I told you about the idea, like however, like six months ago or whatever, like I the idea was the last thing that I had. Um, I feel like I want to go with the Purpose podcast. So just hear me out. <laughs> so, okay. So I think purpose is cool because it can work on like a number of different levels. Obviously, like the technical side in terms of like, oh, like your lighting. What is the purpose of having like dark lighting and the purpose of this certain song or these textures or whatever. But I feel like it could also go into a much deeper sense in terms of like what is the purpose of this piece? Like what are you trying to achieve in terms of... Or how does this align with... The purpose you feel you have on this earth that's super deep right like, yeah no seriously <laughs> no, that too that too because i think especially in i'm not even that old but like in today's in today's <laughs> day and in age London. yeah in today's day and age i feel like there's just so many i don't even want to call them distractions because they're just everywhere now like everything's a distraction yeah but there's just so many things that we're surrounded by and so many things that tell you like what what to think or like how mm -hmm. to think and stuff like that and i and I think personally that being creative and finding your way to like make an, an imprint, I guess, like on the world and being able to take ideas from just your head and like put them into reality, like that's a really, a really dope way of finding your purpose, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. And like making your, I guess, just imprint on other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I got into a conversation with someone when I was interviewing at my job and I think it's a good conversation to have because it kind of goes in line with what we're talking about. Mm. Um, and we discussed this matter of inspiration versus influence. So especially mm. with social media today, when you see something, are you inspired because of it or are you seeing it and you're influenced to do it just because you saw them do it? So it's mm. like distinguishing, it's like, am I creating this because I'm inspired or I'm influenced. Does True. that make sense? Yeah, that definitely does. Okay. That's so. that's cool actually. Like kind of just bouncing off that. Um, I think I saw it was just like an Instagram post or like a meme thing. Of, I don't even know what you call them, but <laughs> <laughs> it was like a collage of those pictures where it's like the girl is like behind the guy and her hand is like this. And it's just like, yeah. you know I'm talking about those yeah, travel yeah. photos? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like a collage of like every single person who's ever like posted that 
on Instagram and it's just like when does art stop becoming art and I was just like huh like makes you think yeah that's that's super interesting so that's a really cool conversation that you can have I feel like in the workplace too mm -hmm. I, d I dig that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you uh, think that like with this project obviously your goal is to have people be inspired by it and mm -hmm. not so much like oh I want to start creating this just because this person is creating mm -hmm. it type thing, right? Yeah. So how do you think you can cultivate inspiration? Cool. Okay. So I think the cool thing about having a podcast attached to a video is that it's almost like a conversation within the description box. So like when I see people's YouTube videos and stuff, sometimes I'll just go to the description to just see like what the piece is about or like where they heard the song or like why they even made it and not saying that you can't just make stuff to make dope stuff like <laughs> <laughs> like that's part of it too that's part of the process but i feel like it's just so hard to connect on a more like deeper level in terms of like how projects manifest themselves i guess mm -hmm. um and it's not really so much with this podcast i want to i want to show people like all like the details that goes into like behind the scenes stuff which i think is important but more so just get people to understand that like creative things come from somewhere and it's not just random ideas all the time where it's like, yo, let's just, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good, and we put it all together. Like most of the times, the best things that happen creatively, I feel like are conversations and like back and forth type of things where you bounce ideas off of each other and just having that like human element, um, I think is probably just the biggest thing that I would want to have people take away mm -hmm. apart from just like all the technical stuff which is super dope too right yeah it's pretty cool mm -hmm. um generally speaking how does your choreography process go so it's a little bit different i think it kind of depends on the song too but um i generally start just by listening well obviously <laughs> <laughs> obviously stop by listening but i usually just end up uh, sitting there and kind of like trying to dissect the song a little bit um like for me, I try to break it up into eight counts or like the way the rhythm goes um, and see if or when and how often they change like the rhythm of the song. Um, listening to different layers, beats, uh, lyrics, sometimes there's like weird synth sounds going on and stuff too. Um, but usually after I dissect the song a little bit, uh, I'll just kind of freestyle um, and record it uh, just so I can kind of see what my body does like sort of naturally. To it and then from there i'll kind of just watch it and um if i'm feeling it we proceed and if not <laughs> if not i kind of just keep going yeah. do you find that a lot of the times you're like this is all whack and like i don't you yes. don't take stuff from your freestyle heck or? yeah i think <laughs> i think with with any creative they probably put out probably like maybe like five percent of the ideas that they come up with and just like everybody in general because like Everyone has so much going on in their head and you can only say so many, so many words a minute, you know, and you can only take so many actions within a day. So I think that you have to be comfortable in saying no to a lot of your ideas. Um, but it just comes with like a balance too, and just being able to know when like, you're not like being able to know that you're, you're actually like capable of doing like these things and not mm -hmm. just always doubting and feeling like this isn't good enough, you know, and stuff like that yeah because I, I don't know i feel like that's one of the biggest challenges for sure like i would say 100 percent of the time we're the person that gets in our way most so and especially in such a vulnerable state when you're choreographing it's hard to be like right this is not good like <laughs> just like move on and be like hey how can i how can i create what i'm trying to picture basically um was there anything difficult not difficult, different with this specific piece when you were choreographing or was um, it the same old process? I think, well, yeah, yeah, I think every every time it's a little bit different, but for this one, I, I think I tried to focus a lot less on being super clean, which is, I think, different in, in terms of, like, what I usually try and do. I'm usually, like, picture, picture, angles, angles, yeah. all that type of stuff. Um, but I tried to connect to the song a little bit more emotionally and, like, on a little bit of a deeper level. And I think even just being at the beach was kind of cool too, because it was just like pretty much the beach that I'd grown up at too. I used to just go there like almost every day after high school and just kind of hang out. So it felt good for me personally. You know, I hope it felt good for the other, <laughs> for everyone else there too. I can only um, speak for myself. But. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, in terms of the process, pretty much just trying to connect a little bit more to 
the lyrics and just like what they're trying to get across and have mm -hmm. that show not only in my movement but just kind of like in my energy I guess just about yeah. me and stuff like that and the way I carried myself that day so so which came first the song or the idea that you wanted to shoot at the beach Ooh, definitely the song mm -hmm. definitely the song for this one um I don't know I just started hearing like all these little I don't even know how to describe it all these little sounds in the back and it just it reminded me of just like the shore yeah just like the waves crashing in so yeah yeah that's pretty much where that it's exciting when a song makes you want to move because like there's so many songs you can vibe to, but you're like, I, I can't choreograph to this. Or right. you're not like feeling motivated to choreograph to right, it. Right, right. But when it's just like, it kind of just takes you there. It makes the process a lot easier. Yeah, and I think you really have to like uh, gravitate, or not gravitate, but you really have to like not take those moments for granted. Because like you were saying, I feel like there's so much music out there that kind of makes you want to just like vibe and stuff. But yeah, once but you, you're not... Yeah, once you get something that really starts getting your like gears going and like you start seeing like visions of stuff it's like <laughs> kind of rare yeah but yeah heck yeah um do you work better alone or collaborating when it comes to choreography Ooh, okay um i think i'm actually comfortable i'm actually really comfortable with both um which from like a lot of pe the people that i've worked with they've told me that they're not super comfortable with collaborating but i think it's because like when i first started dancing it was just always in like a really big like group setting it was never yeah. it was never like a solo thing or like anything like that so I've always been kind of comfortable sharing like movement with other people in that way uh, but interestingly enough not really in freestyling so okay because I feel like that's not really it's more like an internal yeah it's more of like a thing for myself that I'm not comfortable with rather than working with other people but mm -hmm. yeah so I don't, I don't know as far as collaborating I think it's a lot of fun to be honest because it's like it's like once you guys are done working on like a project or something together, it's like having a visual representation of like a conversation with that person, kind yeah. of. That's kind of the way that I see it. Yeah. So, okay. but yeah. That kind of already answers my next question, <laughs> but um, do you find that it helps you to talk to others about your art or is it more of an internal process for you as far as like, okay, I have this idea. Do you like go to other people and like, like it helps you to talk to them about it or do you kind of just seclude yourself? Uh, true. Okay. Um, I think I'm a little bit of both sometimes because if I'm really feeling an idea and like I feel like I'm just kind of running with it like I can I can just talk about it for days to people um, and then if I, 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 I have a bad tendency to get hung up on like really small details so like going into something I won't present someone with an idea if I feel like it's not if it's not like good enough I guess which kind of goes back to what we were talking about before self-doubt yeah. getting in your own way for yeah. real yeah but i don't know like i don't i don't like coming to people and just being like yo like i think this would be cool and then they're like all right cool so what should we do and then i don't know what to say yeah yeah so it's like i always feel like i need to have like the next you step and like the next step and like the next step mm -hmm. but that's just also like a little bit of like perfectionism like coming into mm -hmm. and i don't know but i think i enjoy collaborating with people a lot just because it is a very like vulnerable like state that you have to be in with somebody and it, it, it kind of does something to you like outside of dance in terms of like being able to just I don't know like work with, with people others. yeah for sure yeah <laughs> it's a skill you have to have Heck so yeah. um, what's this piece about okay so if you listen to like what she says um, or at least in the whole song she says do you ever feel like you're a drop in the ocean and she says do you ever feel like you're drowning in day-to-day -day life and stuff like that and I feel like that's just like a meme already in itself like people <laughs> relate to that like heavy like yo I'm so sick of working every day I'm so sick of going to school every day or I'm so sick of you know whatever yeah. whatever and um yeah like I definitely do feel like that a lot and I think it's it's hard for people to say that sometimes even even for me too just because like I mean, just going back to like social media and just like the influence that it has on everybody and just being able to see it, you know, all the time and how great everybody's lives, you know, are <laughs> and or at least how great they seem. And I'm not here to just freaking like bash social media right now, but I think it is kind of hard to just sort of take a step back sometimes and be real with yourself. Heck yeah. And even, yeah, being real with others too. Like yeah. it's, you can't be real with others if you're not real with yourself at the yeah. end of the day. Um, and I think... And that this comes from personal experience sometimes we just get in this routine of like becoming victim to our own circumstance and like 
yeah, you hate going to work every day, but what are you going to do about it? Like, mm-hmm. you have the power to change it, but, like, sometimes we just don't see what our own water that we're just, like, in. Heck, yeah. Know? That's a really good way to put it, for sure. Like, sometimes you just need someone else, even, yeah, sometimes you just even need, like, someone else to just tell you, just be like, yo, like, why are you even in this situation still? Like, you could, you could just do so much more, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. having people like that, I think, is really important, too, but... Anyways, back to what this piece is about. I guess pretty much that, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> pretty much that. And just kind of like being able to not fall into like that routine and that funk and just being like every day is just going to suck. Like, oh my gosh, like tomorrow I have to do this and the next day I have to do this. And like, yeah, you do, but you there's... You should want to be excited yeah, about it. Yeah, there's, so there's so many other things happening throughout that day that you're experiencing and you're only focusing on just that one responsibility and that one task that you have. Yeah. But it's probably like a really nice day outside. Right. And you're probably dreading it and then once it's happening, you're probably dwelling on it. Mm, true. Yeah. So then it just takes up your whole mindset versus like opening your mind to the bigger picture and mm. like how beautiful life is, you know? Heck yeah. Yeah. That's very well put. <laughs> Thanks. What was it? Dwelling and- Dreading, Dreading and, and dwelling. then dwelling. I like that. When it's future and when it's already happened. I'm gonna use that somewhere. <laughs> I'm definitely using that. <laughs> Next piece. Yeah. Inspired by Kendra. Uh, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the most frustrating or difficult part of launching this? Ooh. Um, I would say probably two things. The first thing was just kind of just getting out of my head and just kind of understanding that it's impossible to have every single detail kind of ironed out before mm-hmm. it happens and you want to be as prepared as possible but sometimes you just kind of have to let things go with the flow and just start things so that so that they can eventually manifest um and i think well maybe three things <laughs> i'm just not even answering your question at all it's like what's the hardest thing like three things um a hundred here yeah. we go <laughs> okay. well that's the first one. Second okay. one i think is scheduling just because like <sighs> scheduling is such a nightmare <laughs> Ah, when, it's the reason why I don't do more videos. <laughs> right? It's such a nightmare when you're not like my one year. Like a director or anything. Like if if I I would love to just be like, yo man, like I would love to like Kendra, I would love to have you in this video. Like I'm thinking like two rehearsals and then a shoot day and I'll pay you like, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks, you know, and stuff like that. But and then yeah, that's it. And then we're good. Because if you know, like money <laughs> Money kind of makes money, the world go around. Money drives people's yeah. <laughs> priorities. Yeah. And if it's you're not, not paying them, scheduling is... For real. It's, it's not the most important thing, but I understand that you need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need it to survive. And um, and we both <clears throat> had, like, what, five to six people in our mm-hmm. videos. So yeah. to get those all those people in one room multiple times, yeah. it's like... Out of, you know, work and um school other commitments yeah and other people dancing just other projects and stuff like that and we all live in different areas of orlando that's true because orlando is freaking huge <sighs> tolls <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i don't want to talk about tolls colonial so <laughs> but um yeah i think that that was a real big pain mm-hmm. just having to coordinate everyone's schedule and then people not being able to do it and then people being able to do it and then not being able to do it again and then yeah that was a big pain in the butt and <laughs> i think there's a lot of sacrifice when it comes to art in general um, oh yeah but especially in the process of getting people together mm-hmm. so and even, even, it's sorry oh, no, it's ahead, just yeah. so appreciative when it finally happens mm-hmm. um because it's like I don't want to take this for granted because people are giving me my time. We may not have all rehearsed together, but we're here. Yeah. We're going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Like, I feel like it's it's so... Just apart from the people who are like putting the project together, like all the people that are involved too, like even just the dancers just saying yes to something like this and just being like, yo, like I have this idea and they like don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, it's gonna be like a podcast thing. A podcast thing. And like a video and like, like we'll go to the beach and they're just like, all right, okay. yeah, just let me know when, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's always how it happens. Like, yeah, just let me know when. So, and then you gotta like text everybody like right. individually. I'm like, yo, like, is this day good for you? And then, <laughs> yeah, but no, for real though, like I, I love when just like people are just so down to help with things and yes and just so ready like there's just people, people who are yeah bubbly all the time and just like their energy just feeds me <laughs> like <laughs> i just love being around it it's too good 
F food. We got people feeding us over here. I mean, so chicken, whatever makes chicken, the world Chicken noodle soup for the soul. Is that what it is? <laughs> soup We're getting soul. deep over here. Uh, that's the um, point, though. It's kind of the point. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Slowly. So what was your favorite part of launching us so far? Uh, I know there's going to be a lot more favorites. <laughs> okay. I'll try, I'll try and keep it. I'll try and keep it uh, contained. But um, in terms of my favorite things, yeah, kind of just being around everybody. Like, it is super stressful the day of, like, having to think about, like, uh, like everything that you need to do in terms of, like, getting people together and being on time and, like, not forgetting stuff at home, like, three times. And juggling everything else yeah. with your schedule. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, three times. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just being around, like, everybody just feels good, you know, and just being able to dance and kind of, like, let go. Um, and just be super vulnerable because like you can learn it and you can be dancing and like be marking it and stuff like yeah. that But like when you go full out like something like happens to you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like something happens to you and, it, and it's so cool to feel that coming off of other people Without yeah. even just like saying anything. Yeah, and like, you know, like we're just doing like this like at the we're same time the same things. Yeah we're Emitting different energy. Yeah, but it feels so good and like yeah. that's I used to I used to not believe in that stuff and just like not believe in like energy like projection and like oh, stuff wow. like that but like I don't know like after ever since I started dancing and just getting like more and more into it like as time passed I just started That's to amazing. understand yeah understand what people were talking about yeah and I think it's just kind of almost breaking down like a not like a stigma of like energy and stuff like that but it almost just like showing people that it, it is like a, a real thing kind mm -hmm. of. I don't know. I think that was that was my favorite part. So I'll just I'll just keep it on one thing. I'll keep okay. it on one thing. Cool. <laughs> um, thinking more along the lines of the future, what do you hope to achieve with this? Ooh. Like, what would what would you be a big aspiration? Um, I have a, a lot of goals with this, and I think we've kind of just talked about them too. But what? Are the, well, I really just want people to be able to appreciate that everything that they see is just the product of what was in somebody's head at some point. So something as simple as just like, oh, that's a really cool sign over there. Like, I like that, you know? <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll go to a, maybe I'll go to like a locally owned art, art store and look at some art that they have there or something like that. I, I, I think that just being able to connect with people in that sense can go a really long way in pushing the culture or whatever or pushing the way that people view art as a whole and not just kind of like things that you're influenced by that you're mm -hmm. saying and things that you're rather more inspired and moved by so of course there are things that you make just to like look dope and look cool and like have great aesthetics and stuff like that but you know at the end of the day there's a purpose to every decision that a creator makes whether you're a dancer you're a singer you're a painter you're an architect, you know, there's just always a purpose to like each thing. And I think that that gets lost in the end product. Um, the, the saying like, uh, oh shoot, I don't even know what the saying is. It's like greater than the sum of the parts or something like that. We're great. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah. Can't say it, but I know. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I think, I think that's super true for, for art. Like what you see in the finished product is so much more than what was really like put into it like when you go watch a movie like you can sit there for like 10 minutes and there's like names like scrolling by yeah. forever and that's just so crazy to me that so many people will work on something like that but at the end of the day once you go home and you talk about it to your friends or whatever the biggest thing you can say is like yo that movie was dope like i love that movie and just being able to talk about like yo i, I like i like the lighting in that or like i like the yeah. cinematography or I like the choices that the director made and this and stuff like that. It leaves an imprint on you. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think just being able to take something from like a huge face value in terms of like the final product and being able Break to see down. all the little things mm -hmm. really can can cultivate like a lot of appreciation for something. And that's kind of just the direction that I would like people to go towards, I guess. In and it could inspire people to move in their own way and then, yeah. then we're just creating this circle of art heck yeah yeah that's the goal um cool <laughs> what in particular about florida dancers do you think stands out Ooh, i think um well pretty much every florida dancer that i've met has a cool sort of well 
I don't want to say like backstory, like we're just all in an anime, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think everybody has a good sense of like self of like where they came from in terms of like, as, as a, as a dancer, everybody sees themselves in like a certain way and has like their own kind of identity. I don't think anybody really tries to be like anybody else out here in Florida. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, it, and that's cool. And, and I think that that needs to be like kind of celebrated more. And emphasized, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause, cause everyone in Florida that I've met is, is really different. You know, there's, you know, the battle scene, there's choreography, you know, there's just like straight up freestylers, b-boy crown everywhere. There's, there's so many different types of dancers and people here that I think it's, it's almost a shame that we don't all know each other in some way. Mm -hmm. And I get that people have like priorities and stuff like, you know, like I have, <laughs> you know, I can't even talk like everyone has to work and yeah. can't attend everything. But I think it's just so dope that we're all so different, but just so like, just because we're all from the same place and we've been through not the same exact things, but similar things just from where, just because of where we're from mm -hmm. and the, the, the struggles that like artists and like entertainers have to face, especially like in this area too. Um, yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people believe in, you know, because they want to chase their dreams and stuff like that and leave and go to other cities. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are still here that are really talented. And I think that we shouldn't always have to look towards like other people to find that inspiration because there's a lot of there's a lot of really good stuff here. Yeah. You know, it's we not can just be that. Yeah, for, for sure. It's not just ourselves for other people. L.A. and Canada. Yeah. And like, I don't even know wherever else people go in New York. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's cool here. <laughs> Over sure. there, when you, if you move there, you're a drop in the ocean. And, like, not to say here you're a big fish in a pond. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know what I'm saying. But, like... <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel what you're trying to get at, I think, though. You have more of a grasp and a network to utilize appropriately. Mm. And then... You can just build upon what you've already been working on versus going somewhere else and starting over in a way. Word, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't like when people say you can only be successful in these big cities where it's like, why not build where you are? Yeah. Because geography is geography. Like, mm, definitely. It doesn't matter where you're from. There's, I mean, what I love too, and not to say you have to stay here because if you go somewhere else, you suck. No, that's not what I'm saying <laughs> because there's a lot of Florida dancers that have moved on and they're doing really, really big things. Heck yeah, super successful. But I feel like these people don't forget where they came from. And mm -hmm. that's really important because you don't want to move out there and lose your head because mm -hmm. of what you're surrounded by. And these right. people, I feel like, I don't know a lot of them personally, but I feel like they've stayed grounded and they come back and visit and they give back and it's super important. Mm -hmm. So that 100%. Yeah. <clears throat> I went off on a little tangent. Right. Um, how long have you been dancing? Um, I started dancing when I first came to Orlando in 2011 um, with a group called Fresh Off The Beat at UCF. Shout out y'all. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, that's when I first started dancing. Just pretty much like, I guess, I don't even know if it was called Urban Choreo at the time, but yeah, with urban choreography, you know, picture, picture, <laughs> that type of stuff, lines, lines. Um, <clears throat> and then from there, I pretty much just started to continue to do it. Started to continue to do it. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> English! But yeah, I just kept on doing it. And it was never really a thing that I expected to be like a really big part of my life. Um, but it just kind of kept happening over and over again. Then I kept finding myself in these situations where I was like, all right, I think I'm not gonna do this anymore, and mm. I just somehow, somehow yeah, I just somehow kept happening. So, Purpose, yeah, for destiny, real. all that. Yeah, you know, can't deny it. So how old are you now? I am 25. Yeah, think about that for yeah. a second. Um, so you started when you were 18, I think. Okay. Just about yeah, when I was 18, so it's been about seven years. So, so like, in high school, you never thought. I want to grow up and be a dancer. Well, in terms of... Okay, so maybe I should rephrase that. Like, I did, like, cultural dances when I was okay. younger. So, Filipino cultural dances, like Tinikling and Mogalalatik. Um, if you know what that is, but... I learned a little bit. Yeah, I learned a little... Dabbled a little bit. <laughs> a yeah. little bit. But, um, yeah, so I think that's honestly where I got, like, 
where I got my rhythm from and being okay. able to like understand music because yeah. if you know tinickling, it's literally just like you literally go yeah yeah and you just like step in between these like yeah. little bamboo sticks so <laughs> we did that in class one day in college <laughs> Shout what? out Miss Judy. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, alright, legit. But yeah, like it's a good it's pretty good for rhythm. Because like is. you, you don't want to get your feet clapped, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, and I learned when I was young. So I probably I probably did that when I was about like five. Oh wow. Yeah, started that when I was about like five. Um and I did that for a couple of years and just other like Filipino folk dances. Um uh I did not I mean people like I when people ask if I've ever tried breaking before, I would wanna say yeah. Like I I learned how to six step in high school and like I tried to windmill and it hurt and then I was just like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, not this, for me. this is not for me, this is not my style. <laughs> uh, but yeah, apart from that, like I started dancing when I first came here in 2011, yeah. Cool. Um, I know we talked about this briefly, but mm. what's your viewpoint on social media with dance and how it's kind of developed? Right, so I mean, there's there's definitely two ways to look at it and I think I'm just like on like a spectrum of both, so like, it's really dope because it has given everybody a platform to like be seen and be visible and stuff like that. And you know, a lot of people do get famous just by like going viral and which is really crazy to me. Um, but you know, there are also things that just become like just trends and people just do them just to do them. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> saying going viral in hindsight sounds really cool, but it's such an empty concept mm -hmm. because okay. Yeah. You got, you got all these views and you got all these likes, but like, Word. there's no substance to it. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do next? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's dope if you get like a, a partnership, like a business you partnership. You get sponsored yeah. and then like things start happening. Yeah, yeah, but like, I hate when people are like, I wanna be famous. It's Word, like, yeah. For what? Like, what are you, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Your... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely, definitely. <clears throat> and I don't know. It's good and it's bad. It just kind of depends on how you look at it. And I kind of struggled with that for a long time too, because like, I'm really bad at posting on social media. Like, I'll post like every once in a while, and then I'll stop, and then I'll go on like a spree of like four days where I'm like constantly updating it, and then I'll just like stop again. <laughs> You've been uh, real good though lately. Yeah, lately I'm trying to <laughs> trying to keep up with it a little bit more because you know we got things moving. But it's right. because I understand. Like, I see the purpose in it. You see now. the business. Yeah, more yeah. more of like why why I should use it rather than just being like, oh, I don't want to use this. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to, you feel like you're like intruding like, on people's off. lives. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't want to post this on my story, yeah. but then it's like, there's so but, many people in this world. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah I get it, I get it. it I mean, it's cool. I, I, I look at people's stories. I like pictures, I comment on them. Like, <laughs> I'm not hating on it. It's just like, sometimes it's just a little bit too much and I feel like I have to like, separate myself yeah. from it or else I just lose my mind a yeah. little bit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have <Yes>. to reset her. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Um, you've been teaching for a while, so your style is like well established by now, but how did you come into your own with your style? Um, mm. and where did you draw inspiration from? Got you. Okay. Well, so when I first started dancing, like in the like Orlando scene, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, like I was literally just with Fresh Off The Beat for probably like, like three years, maybe three and a half years. And I didn't even like understand the fact that there is just like so, much so many other dancers like not even just in Orlando just like Florida like in general and like there's so many other styles to dance like I didn't understand that there was like popping and locking that were separate things and and you know <clears throat> and what do you mean it's not pop yeah lock. I was like pop lock like you know but <laughs> that's super embarrassing to say but everybody has to go through it at some point yeah. right and um yeah so I just started pretty much with like I guess what you would call urban choreography um, with a focus in like pictures and like textures and stuff like that um, So the the people that I learned from were actually people that ended up moving in with me and becoming my roommates um, As I grew up so a guy named Jordan and a guy named Mitch um, I pretty much just learned their choreography like straight up for like two years or something like that So that's where I got like my like sense of like foundation not saying like it's a style and that's mm -hmm. my foundation but that's where I got my sort of beginnings and how I wanted to create and um the I, core of your style for sure right. yeah and then from there I started once I first started making choreography it was for like a group setting I think mm -hmm. there was like 30 30 or a bus or something like that so it was always for like a bigger picture on stage mm -hmm. type of thing um so I think that's why I always tried to make my movements more on the cleaner side 
and something that translates more like in terms of lines and pictures and stuff like that um and yeah pretty much just doing the group thing like ever since I, I would say either being a leader of one or like a part of another group that's what's more so driven my style and just wanting to I don't know I don't want to say like just like look cool but like but like wanting to look like the music I think that was just always how I saw dancing like if it sounds like that you should look like that um yeah and in terms of like inspiration I think I kind of have the same people that a lot of people look up to like Keone and Mari like they're just the best things ever um Chris Martin and Larkin Poynton I think are Poynton Poynton I don't know how to say his last <laughs> name but I think they're really dope and I, I like the the visuals and stuff that that they do um and the way that they just go about creating I feel like it's very genuine and playful um but it, it's it's such like a good um like good way to capture like their like personalities I think and, and I feel like whenever I need to see someone who who just moves the way they want to move like I'll just look at them because mm -hmm. it's it's so supernatural and just looks like great on them yeah um but yeah I think those are probably like my main main spots that I that I tried to take inspiration from um and in terms of like actual styles of hip-hop I wouldn't say that I'm like super proficient in any but where I try to take a lot of inspiration from and influence I would say is popping and tutting um just for the main like concepts of, in terms of like hitting hitting and mm -hmm. um like angles and stuff like that yeah cool yeah, those are the ones for sure <laughs> um I feel like this is like a case of apple and oranges but would you say you are drawn more towards teaching or performing or is it kind of like you have to have both in your life? Mm, yeah, that is, that's tough. Um, dang, if I had to choose, ooh, I don't know. If I had to choose, I would maybe say, dang, I don't know. Like, can I do one without the other? I don't think I can do one without the other. Cause I, don't, I, I think if I strictly try to teach all the time, then I'll just, shrivel up and die yes. just because like <laughs> because i just won't have any won't have any creative juices left um but you i also have that outlet yeah 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 yeah, for sure and i don't know the, and the thing with performing too is like i love it but i think I'll, i will need to have to create something at some right. point for myself you know so it's like a evolution not evolution a, a, a circle yeah it's just another cycle. circle yeah and i and i think just having a healthy balance of both and just being able to kind of move along the spectrum of both extremes is is important and i think that's why i'm so nervous and excited for this project at the same time just because i haven't had anything really of like an outlet like this mm -hmm. in a long time mm -hmm. just because it's always been for a group setting or just like for a team or for for class and just stuff like that um i've only put out like two videos or something like that mm -hmm. ever so i don't know it's exciting <laughs> for sure but I don't know. I'm nervous. Aww. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah, I'm excited too. Uh. Um, we've been talking about this concept a lot, mm -hmm. and dance is a really vulnerable art form. Mm -hmm. um, what is your relationship with vulnerability? Ooh, that's tough. Um, in terms of like how, like my experience you, with it, how I handle it, I how guess. How you sit with it and word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really bad at it, honestly. Like, I, I'm super bad at, like, talking to people about, like, my feelings and just, like, How talking How is this about, experience for you right now? Uh, it's not too bad. Because <laughs> okay. I'm comfortable with you. Yeah. But, and I don't, like, people are gonna watch it later. But, like, I don't feel, I don't feel your eyes on me right now. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not the best at talking about things that are going on inside my head. Just because, kind of like what I was saying before, like, I feel like... I want to have like everything like planned out in terms of like what I want to say or like how I want to carry myself around other people and I think that's just a product of like not the way I was raised or not, not I don't want to say like that but just like everything that I've kind of just been through I guess and in terms of like wanting to you know feel accepted and just feel like you're like other people and stuff like that um, and in terms of just like vulnerability and just being okay with like other people like judging you I guess I think one of the biggest things that I had to learn is that there's nothing you can do about it. Like, like no matter how much you try to like make yourself look a certain way or talk a certain way or act a certain way, like people are just going to judge you, mm -hmm. you know? And 
it's it's kind of like an obvious thing to say, <laughs> but uh, I think it's super important to just be aware of that and just kind of have like a almost like a fuck it attitude. You have um, to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Dealing with vulnerability, I'm not very good at it. Like most of the time, I would rather just kind of like shell up and like not say anything. <laughs> rather than just express I, uncomfortability. I think that's like, it's so funny for dancers to be like, oh, like I hate being vulnerable because like we are, we put ourselves in vulnerable, vulnerable positions mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, you're right. Not only when we're performing, but uh, as a working professional dancer, the amount of times you have to go in front of someone that you don't know, mm -hmm. um, an audition. True that. It's hella vulnerable. True that. And like, I feel like we're really, really brave souls to just, just consistently do that because we're told no all the time. and But something is driving us to keep doing it. So, like, we, I think because we express ourselves through our bodies, like, talking and all that is, like, yeah. the scariest thing for us. But put us in front of, you know, just put music on. We're like, yeah, yeah do out. this for you. And, like, to other people, that's, like, so scary for them. True that, yeah. So I feel like it's just, I don't know. Interesting. I never thought about it that way. It's like when they say like you lose one of your senses, like the other one gets stronger. Ooh. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, I guess. Yeah. That is really interesting, though. I've never thought about it like that. Because mm -hmm. yeah, like when you go to like, I don't even know, just like the club or like parties and stuff, and like, I don't know. I'm not trying to bash any of my friends, but like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Sometimes I want to dance and then they just don't, or they want to dance and they shouldn't. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's a really cool way to look at that actually. Just because as a dancer, yeah, we are super vulnerable and just put ourselves out there all the time to literally just be judged. Yeah. Like like yo. That is. Like dang, that is crazy. Like how come you don't have to audition for other jobs? Like. If you're about to be a plumber, like, how come you don't have to, like, go fix a toilet first? You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, yo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to perform. You just talk about it in an interview, maybe. Yeah. Or just apply. That's and really it's like, weird. Other people live such different lives than us. Because um, people have, like, set paths, like, hey, I go to school, and then I go For to grad school, and then I, what, what did you say? Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. And then um, I get this job, and it's like... You're in that position probably for a long time until you move up or it's just someone else offers you another job. But like with entertainment, it's like, there's no rest. There's like mm -hmm. constantly, every gig ends, you gotta get another one. Mm -hmm. you gotta use, auditioning never ends. Yeah. Which is exciting because like our brains are wired to like variety and constantly be moving. But at the same time, it's like, why did I choose this life? <laughs> <laughs> like other people feel like have it easier but in hindsight they probably don't everything comes with its own challenges um True that. but it's definitely a very um different lifestyle that we've chosen mm. the hours to the too least. yeah like i feel no... like <laughs> i feel like i live on an opposite schedule from like my from, like everyone i know like my roommates <laughs> that aren't dancers at least like, we'll just, like, just come home at, like, 4 a.m. sometimes, like, and I just wake up at noon, and, like, there's no one in my house, and I'm just, like... Where'd everybody go? Yeah. Like, <laughs> all right, I guess it's morning, 12 in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, the struggle is real, but it's... It, it's, it's worth, worth it. you know? Like, as much as, as much as we complain about it, it's, it's strangely fulfilling to... I mean, we're, we're complaining, but we're smiling right now. Yeah, so it's, like, true. you know, there, right. we, we do enjoy it. It's a um, good complaining. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather be struggling. Oh, what is that thing I posted on my story? Um, yeah, here it is. I used to be afraid of failing at something that really mattered to me, but now I'm more afraid of succeeding at things that, sorry, it just went away. That, Scared me. That don't matter. Don't. Um, Bang. Mic drop. And that's just been like a really big thing. I feel like this isn't even my interview and I'm talking, but um, sorry, it's <laughs> I feel like that's been a really big thing for me, um, switching my whole lifestyle and circumstance around to just going after things that only matter. Because I used to do things that I would tell myself mattered, but they didn't. And it was reflected in my health and just my attitude. So, I mean, we're tired, but we're doing stuff <laughs> that matters. So. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really <laughs> dope that you were able to go through something like that in terms of like 
starting down a path that you thought was like the one that you were supposed to go down and being able to be brave enough to be like actually no nah. like I actually yeah. don't think I want to do this and I think that a lot of people hit that point in their lives and they kind of just like keep going and like mm-hmm. they just they just find themselves in a situation down the road where they're like oh like oh snap I'm 40 yeah yeah, or, yeah. didn't mean to do that you know what I mean and I don't know. That's what's so exciting because I feel like every dancer is is hit that point and they were just like, no, nah, I'm not supposed to do this. I, I think I'm actually supposed to dance. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about just seeing that in, in people and just kind of having that mutual understanding that people do it not because they're getting paid like a shitload of money. Like oftentimes it's the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Pennies. Yeah, for real. But just knowing that like there are so many people around you that are they're willing to invest so much time into this and so much of just like their life force into that is is really awesome yeah. because their heart literally beats for it so no. I, yeah Blood. deep <laughs> it's real um is there anything else you want to talk about i've covered my questions um yeah um no i think we're good actually for today <laughs> i'll save it for the next one i do want to okay, do yeah. a quick thing though so yeah. um so there's like a kind of like a segment, I guess, that I kind of want to introduce or do on this okay. thing. Um, it's just basically it's just a word association game. Okay. So like I'll say the one word and then or I'll say like a word or a phrase and then you say like the next word or phrase that comes like into your head. Oh. Okay. So. Does do we keep going back and forth? No, no. no I'll just say something. You say a word, you say I say something, it. and then we'll just kind of just expand upon that maybe. Okay. Okay, just like a little bit. Yikes. Um, okay, I didn't no, know this was happening. It's okay. I, I just want to try it. I'll just try one. I'll just try one. So, alright. My first one is... My first one is college. College? Yeah, just college. What's the first thing that comes to my mind? Mm, yeah. Self-discovery. Ooh, I like that. There we go. That's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, college is good. We're going to use that every time now. <laughs> That's good. That's always going to be the first word. Okay, <laughs> self-discovery. That's awesome. Is there, like, a certain moment that kind of like sticks out to you that 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 makes that word like shine really bright in your head i feel like when i look back at who i was at 18 Mm. as a freshman to 22 it's like night and day not to say i completely changed but i grew into the person i always was but didn't know how to be Mm. wow nice that was good that was really good Um, i'm glad we have this recording (laughs) that's really good no, for real. I just got really excited saying that. Um, I haven't talked about this with anyone. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I, when I started, I <clears throat> had no idea what I wanted to do, which as a freshman, you don't have to pick your major. So. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's fine. I was having a lot of fun and like whatever. Um, I auditioned for Ruckus, and that was the year that Sam Fran and Desiree and all them were Legends. on the board. Um, Legends. And I made callbacks. Um, it was so nerve wracking, but the same, like callbacks were supposed to be the next day, but that day I like, walked up to them and basically told them like, oh, thank you so much for the opportunity, but I'm actually, I'm not going to go through with this because I was scared of the commitment. It was like, you know, nine to one in the morning, <laughs> yeah. three nights a week. And I didn't want to like lose focus of like why I came to school, which like grades and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. so I like, I didn't do it. And it started eating away at me. I was like, why, why did you turn that down? Um, and then so my sophomore year, I, I I took baby steps. Like when I first came to Orlando, I knew no one in the dance community. Right. Um, <laughs> Feel that? <laughs> literally, nothing. Um, I, I don't know if it was my freshman or sophomore year, I went to World of Dance the first year I came here. I watched Ben win with Anne Friends and was like so inspired. Still was probably a very trash dancer at this point. Like I, 2015, I think, or something like that. No, it was like 13 or 14. Was it 13, 14? It, I think it was 13, to be honest. Oh, yo, you're right. Yeah, you're right, actually. And, you know, I said I did hip hop, but when we look back at, you know, what I've learned now, <laughs> it was not hip hop at the time. Um, okay. I could do choreo, but I was not trained in anything foundationally. Um, so yeah, I watched him and I was like, yo, like, this is so cool. Um, and I kind of just had this moment where I was like, hey, what are you doing? So I like applied for the dance minor. That was my next step. 
I got that my sophomore year. So things kind of took a shift. Um, I was so happy to have like dance in my curriculum and it wasn't hip hop, it was other things, but that's still super important. And yeah. I was able to utilize and become more of a leader with, um, you know, choreographing my own pieces. Um, Cause choreography used to really scare me and we'll get into that in my uh, podcast, but you know, I took improv composition classes and like um, performed at the Walt Disney Theater um, for a dance concert and just a lot of, I started to open myself up to more people and um, I don't know, that, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm starting to overthink this answer, I feel like it's super long. No, but it's okay. No, that's kind of what I want to do, like, yeah. I, I want to know like what makes yeah, yeah. that word. So, flash forward, um, junior year, I, okay, so like I'm, I'm taking baby steps to like knowing more people, mm -hmm not letting fear be as big of a factor. And so junior year I studied abroad. And so I kind of took a break from dance for a bit. That and you, so you, awesome. you know, when you, you know, you don't really know how much you love something until it's gone mm -hmm. type thing. Um, studying abroad, I don't regret it in the slightest. Um, it was honestly one of the best times of my life. And I got to live in England for five months That's so um, awesome. and go to school for it. And, their curriculum was like so different over there so like I only had class like twice a week and I was like oh this free time but, like what the way that they like operate is like there's a lot more work outside of class so yeah. it's like they don't teach you that much you kind of have to go on your own and do all the research and that kind of thing so it was like, like a big, it was a big culture yeah. shock at the time I'm like yeah. what 20 yeah. um 21 and I wasn't really dancing. Um, I took I took some tap classes, which was cool. And then yeah. in London, I like took one like industry class. But for the most part, I was more so there to just travel and experience versus like focusing on dance. Right, right. So Makes sense. when I got back from that, it was I got right back right before my senior year of college. It's been another culture shock to come back. Yeah. I hated America. You know? <laughs> I was in like, uh, oh my god, it sucked. Um, but it was that moment, I feel like, it, well, I'm getting to the, the answer to your question, mm -hmm. that pivotal moment for my senior year that I finally felt like, hey, you just like went across the country, you can do anything. So I went back and I auditioned for Ruckus, <laughs> and I did it. Heck yeah. And I was like, you know, better late than never. Mm -hmm. And that was a very um pivotal moment um as far as introducing myself to the dance community um because a lot of squad people came to our open uh practice so i like i was like oh these people what and yeah. like watch them at competitions like ruckus would do world of dance and stuff like that so oh. I still felt very outside of the cool kid circle, but I was like, ooh, I'm like getting my way in. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> uh. And so by the time, like my last year of college was a rush. It was, I was so happy because I was basically, all I was doing was dance classes and like maybe one or two radio classes, but mm -hmm. um, I had finished most of my credits kind of, because I, I dual enrolled in high school for a little bit and then studying abroad. Like I just had everything done so that my last year was like not stressful. Right, right. Which I think is a great way to go about it if you can. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was just, I like 2016 was such a great year for me. Um, and when I graduated, um, told myself you're gonna you know pursue dance but I still was holding on to that like mm -hmm. you majored in radio right. so like I w went into that too um but to sum this all up like 2012 Kendra and 2016 Kendra is like night and day and <laughs> yeah. uh I just feel like college really shapes you mm -hmm. and yeah, it's about having fun, but it's also about looking at, okay, how, um, like, what drives you and what, what do you want to do these right. next 10 years that sure. are really crucial. Definitely, yeah. I would agree with that. I would, yeah. No, for <laughs> real, though, like, that's, that's real. Like, I think 
I think going through college, like, of course your classes are important, but what it really teaches you is like what you like and what you don't like. Like, I don't like super structured settings. I don't like having to, I don't like so someone telling me like, yo, you gotta be here at 8 a.m. every morning and then yeah. next you gotta go to your next class and then you gotta do this and like exactly. I don't know, I'm, I'm not I'm not with that you know what I'm saying and some people are and that's totally cool but like I had to go through like years of just class and just like <laughs> skipping school and just like <laughs> stuff like that to just understand that that's that's really what I think college is for it's like finding out what's for you right it's like the most expensive way to understand what you like and what you don't like pretty yeah. much yeah and I don't know it, it's cool because because some people go in and they and they come out kind of the same person that they were when, mm. when they first went into college. Um, but a lot of people that I know at least grow like leaps and bounds. And like they're still the same person, but you can just tell that they kind of like been through some stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, that's what I love about college. You just kind of come out just more like if you were like a block of clay. You came out like just with a little bit more clay, like chipped off you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More chiseled, more yeah. molded. Closer to your final form, I think. Yeah. That's 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 how I see college. Woo! Yeah. Nice word. Okay, this is a cool uh, little section you got going on. Word, thanks. I think I think it could be something. I have I have some more words, but I think I'm just gonna save. I'll, I'll yeah, save. you're like she took too long for that first one. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, same. I think I think I think we'll save if I use her, if yeah. I use college every time, you know, they'll be expecting it. And right. Like, I mean, for my interview, you have to use something different. Yeah, I'm gonna have to for sure now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think that's Yo. that's it for my section nice. right there. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll I experiment this. with some stuff. Yeah. We sure. got deep. I've got to. <laughs> got to. It's a podcast. This is more right. than a description box. Yeah, so subscribe to our channel. Um, Do it. Like our stuff. Follow us on Instagram. If you want to... Um, follow us on Facebook. Once we have all our tags and stuff, I'll just put yeah. them right here and right here. Or maybe you here. If be part of this movement, hit us up. For sure. We can talk to you. Um, yeah, I think we're all good here for today. That's a wrap. I feel like we need like a, like a outro. Yeah. You know? Maybe if... if yeah, maybe we'll just think of one and then just add it in like okay. in post. <laughs> okay, cool. And be like, see you next time. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs>